Hello beautifuls, this is Aromi here and welcome back to Changeling. We're here in the club room where only special people like us can see it. <laughs> Hey, unless there's a test to a test on it, I'm not interested in vocabulary at the moment. Is she always this sarcastic? Usually, it's worse when she's upset. It's sort of like a litmus. Litmus? You can use it to tell how close she's having to a, having a complete freakout. Ah, oh, I see. I'm right here! And what I'm interested in is how you knew I was a cryptic. Or at least, why you thought I was. Blood pressure. Allie. Okay, okay, calm down. The reason I knew was because of Corvin. Corvin? What does he have to do with it? Remember that book he dropped? Uh, yeah, that weird creepy one? It wasn't just a book, it was a grimoire. A what? <laughs> Carvin was standing at the door as if he'd come he'd just come inside. Man, if this was a prank, they were really going all out. But at this point, I had a feeling that hoping it was a, was just a point prank was pointless. Mark's lack of funny bone aside, Allie didn't look like she was joking. And it's not creepy, by the way. Don't call someone for more creepy. Hey, Cor. So, we were right about your friend. Well, you can see for yourself. Welcome to the Paranormal Mysteries Club. My Chico, right? As usual, he was pretty bubbly. He waved at me from across the room. Did you say it was a grimoire, like a magic book? That's right, and normal people can't see it. So when you so kindly wanted to pick it up for me, I knew you couldn't be a normal human. Thank you, by the way. That was nice of you. If I'm not normal, then what am I? A witch or something? And this is in Spencer's magic too, because I really don't think letting him have magic is a good plan. Who's Spencer? My brother. My very paranoid, emotionally delicate brother. While I was speaking, Corbin wandered over and sat on the table next to the sofa, and immediately overturned the glass of water Mark had given me. He jumped back he jumped back up as a casket of water ran down his pants and down the arm of the couch onto my lap. Uh, sorry, I was too, still too shocked by the whole magic thing to even react. Sorry, I'm sorry, <laughs> sorry. I looked around presumably for something to wipe up the water with. I just sat there staring at my soaked jeans dumbly. Allie, perhaps you could... Don't worry, I've got it. Annoying as that was, this should prove it to you, Michiko. She flicked her hand towards me in a strange circular motion and chanted something on her breath. What? I felt an undeniably wave of warm air look down to find that my clothes were completely dry, as was the sofa. I patted my hands over my legs in wonder. There was no sign that they'd been soaked through only moments, moments before. But, whoa! That even dried my underwear. Creepy. Really, Allie? Come on. His pants were still soaked all down the front. Maybe if you learned to actually read the move for a change. It wasn't on purpose. Help a guy out. Air magic really isn't my forte. Corbin made his best attempt at sad puppy eyes. Allie sighed and rolled her eyes before repeating in the hand gesture and chanting she'd previously aimed at me. This time I saw something. It was kind of hard to describe. <laughs> the air around Corbin seemed to ripple and the water was suddenly just gone. This, this is real, isn't it? Allie turned back to me. I knew I was gawking up at her, but I couldn't help it. I mean, none of this was possible, except that I was watching it happen. No mirrors, no tricks. This was the real thing. Oh my god. You're telling me that I can learn to do that kind of thing? Now, that we don't know. There are a lot of different types of cryptics, not all of which have inherent magic. So, we don't really know what type you are. <laughs> there are many that are non-human. Wait, so if I'm some kind of not- Human thing? What about my family? You're saying my parents have basically been lying to me all the time? Not necessarily. Someone can be a cryptic without their family knowing. For instance, if they were infected by something that changed them. Like zombies? No, like vampirism or lycanthropy? Like like I am not a vampire. Wait, vampire? No, you're most certainly not a vampire. Hey, why are you saying that in such a snooty way, mister? But infection isn't the only way for humans to acquire supernatural abilities. Aside from being born with innate magic, there are lots of reasons humans develop powers. Being descended from paranormal creatures is one reason. Like having fey or elvish blood with somewhere in your li lineage. Elves. If you did, there's a good chance your parents wouldn't even know, depending on how far back it was. And fey blood can lie dormant for generations before rearing its head again. He was talking to me about elves. I gripped my forehead tightly. I almost gave... I could almost feel my brain being crushed under the weight of all of this. What everyone is trying to get at is that there are po lots of possibilities. If you've never demonstrated magic before, it's probably just developing right now. I'm really curious what my power is. 
and probably for reasons similar to what Corvin's just said. So now you're telling me that I'm not even human. I, I'm a fairy or something? Calm down. No one is saying that. We don't know anything for certain just yet. There are ways to find out though. Some of them just take time. I don't... I don't think I want to join this or be a part of this. I mean, suddenly being not even human? I felt gross just thinking of the idea that I wasn't even what I thought I was my whole life. I didn't like it. I caught that look of the three of them shared. What is it? It's just that you really- you don't really get a choice. This bubbly music does not fit the mood. What? Just listen, if you think about it logically, people like us can pose a huge threat to human society. If not because we have unusual abilities, then because by not keeping the secret we could disrupt things. There are other reasons as well, but those are the primary ones. As you can imagine, there are organizations and places that govern people like us since normal law enforcement can't really do it. Organizations like... Like or government organizations that keep track of cryptics. So now that I... Part of the reason this club exists is because we kind of help keep up an eye on the cryptics in the school and town as a whole. You mean there's more than just- Wait! Danny and Elliot are in this club! That's right! So there are also cryptics, and there are quite a few others. Once we discover someone new, we're obligated to report them and bring them into the club. The cryptic re registration office lets students register through us, because it's less stressful than having to go to the local agency. But people who don't cooperate with us have to deal with them directly. It's way better to deal with us. I mean, they're not dangerous or anything, but still. The agency is definitely full of weirdos. You don't want to meet them anytime soon. So I don't get a choice at all. Look, it sounds all scary, but it's not. Your word, your word, sorry, your word. Your world is about to become really amazing. And I think, think about it this way. What happened to you and Spencer as kids may be disconnected to this. Disconnected. Maybe connected. That's... That wasn't entirely implausible, actually. Remember when we were little, you and Spencer used to always tell me about the things you saw out in the woods. We were just playing, though. Were you? I ran my hand over my face thinking about that. It was long ago. My memories were understandably fuzzy. I remember that Spencer and I had imaginary friends. Sometimes they would come and talk to me at night. And was it possible all of that was actually real? Then when I vanished, when Spencer was attacked, the things he said back then... We can help you research that. Maybe find some answers. Maybe find a way to help Spencer and fix whatever broke there. You really think I could do that? Sure, if you learn about yourself, surely you'll learn something about your twin as well. I don't think those incidents have anything to do with this, or you said my family might not be cryptics, though. I don't like, e like either of them, but I'll do this one. That's right, cryptics have weird genetic quirks. Quirks? Right? Quirks, yes. Like I said, with certain types of lineage, it's possible that no one will have even the slightest affinity for magic or exhibit any cryptic traits for decades. Then it suddenly pops up again in one person in one generation as strong as when it was first injected into the bloodline. That's why something like that might be more probable for you than just spontaneously developing magic. Though that does happen too, rarely. So that means it's just me. I'm the only one that's different. Not necessarily, you're twins after all. It's just that given his personality, we might want to approach him more cautiously. This is all way too much. I stood up and gave Ali a shaky smile. I think I need some fresh air. Michiko, just for a few minutes, please. I can't. I just can't absorb all this at once. I stepped around Mark and Corbin heading for the door. The room felt like it was closing in around me. I had to get out of there and get back to reality for a few minutes. I could contemplate the implications of all this in a place that didn't make much didn't make me feel like I'd been carted off by a tornado to some strange place and should expect singing munchkins to appear soon. I didn't even know where I was going, just out, just away from here. Someone stepped through the doorway just as I tried to leave. Can you please move? This is where the demo, like, started ending with the headless, um, new in, and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> My ears trailed off to a terrified squeak when I looked up at the boy I was speaking to. I feel like he's the headless horseman, kind of. One, right? I don't know. He had no. My vision blurred around. <laughs> blurred in my entire field of vision narrowed in on empty space above his shoulders and the gaping hole where his neck should connect to his head. Stunned, I turned back to Allie, though I don't know what I intended to say. My airways constricted, and for a moment I forgot how to breathe. Like. Honestly, I would pass out. <laughs> my knees started to go all wobbly. I knew I was about to hit the floor. I think I'm going to pass out. <laughs> And with that, everything went black. Oh, the comrade was still going? Holy shit. Under the bridge. 
I was probably out for no more than a few minutes. When I started to come to, I realized I must be lying on the sofa. I could hear the others arguing. You could have at least tried to catch her. My hands were full, as you might have noticed. <laughs> Brenna, it's not funny. His hands were full. Mark, couldn't he have reached for her before she hit the floor? <sighs> They're talking about me. I didn't see a need. I highly doubt a fall from that height would seriously harm her in the first place. Are you calling her short? I have to warn you, she's always hated that. That jerk, I'm not short, just a little vertically impaired. I groaned and tried to open my eyes so I could tell him off. Hey Chico, are you okay? The first face I saw was Corbin's looming over me, looking concerned. Easy, you don't want to you don't want to move around too fast just yet. I just I thought I saw a You did see it. I bolted upright. It was me. Sorry, I didn't know a newbie was in the club or I would have stayed away. <laughs> I stared up at him. His head was where it should be, thank god. I, uh, didn't recognize you without a head. That does make things difficult. The familiar black-haired girl was still laughing. I didn't find the situation at all funny, to be honest. I don't think we've met. The girl bounded across the room, pushed Corbin out of the way, and bounced on the sofa right next to me. She had no concept of personal space. She was practically sitting on top of me. Brenna, that was my foot. <laughs> she's so, she's so, like, interesting. So you're the new girl. She looked up and down, almost as if sizing me up. She was pretty, but her gaze made me feel really uncomfortable. Hmm. <laughs> Just, hmm? <laughs> Excuse me? She leaned in really close, staring into my eyes. A deep frown creased her brows. I stood carefully just to give myself some space to breathe. Corbin stood too, reaching out to steady me when I swayed slightly on my feet. Are you okay? I'm just trying to work out at what point I fell down the rabbit hole so I can maybe climb back out. Corbin patted my shoulder gently. Maybe Alice should take you home now. I don't think we really made this very easy on you today. It's been a while since we had a new member in your exact position. Yeah, the trick with the headless boy blocking the door isn't one I recommend for new members. Funny. Come on, Michiko. Court's right. Probably best to get you out of here for a while. I didn't argue. I definitely had enough of the Paranormal Mysteries Club for one day. Ali led me out of the room and I just followed obediently, still in daze. The moment I stepped into the hall, the voices of others completely faded away. I looked back once, but all I saw was an empty classroom. How does that... I mean, if someone sees us walk out of there or something... Like I said earlier, the spell is designed to do what it takes to protect the secret. It can alter perception or even memories to ensure that no one notices anything. I see. I know it's a lot. I'm sorry. I, if I could have warned you, I would have. I just... Please don't be mad at me. How can I be mad at her? She's my friend. She held the secret for so long. She probably wanted to tell me so bad, but she couldn't. The more I thought about it, the more I realized she probably could have done things differently. It's not like I have believed her. She told me the truth during the, <laughs> the drive to school. If she did that, I don't think I would have believed her. As much as I wanted to, I couldn't really fault her there. It's not your fault, okay? I just feel a bit overwhelmed. That's understandable. I'm sorry I freaked out. I'm sorry we scared you. We put her. She put her arm around my shoulder as we head towards the stairs. We didn't say much for the rest of the walk to the car. Okay, I'm not over time. I have two minutes left. <laughs> Right as Ali was about to get in on the driver's side, I stopped. This is all real, isn't it? I'm not crazy. It's real, and you're not crazy. At least no more than you were yesterday. Cute! After you've had time to process it, it'll probably seem a lot less scary. And then, despite everything, we're all pretty much just normal high schoolers. Someone's walking around without a head. And what universe does that constitute a normal high schooler? She just laughed slightly and motioned toward the car. Come on. Was it like this for you? I mean, when you found out you were a witch? I guess it wasn't so sudden. I started seeing things, weird things first. I thought I was going completely bonkers and I was afraid to tell anyone. Especially mom and dad. Mom is busy with her research and dad is busy with the company. I didn't think either of them needed to deal with their daughter losing her mind. She gave me a long, serious look. I tried to deal with it alone for months. You at least have the rest of us. It'll make a big difference. I managed to get myself into some serious trouble. There are a lot of pitfalls in this world. If you don't know, they're there. Normally, we help educate people and get them to read up and learn things on their own so they know what to expect. I didn't have anyone to do that for me, though. I nearly died. My magic went completely haywire, but this one particular wizard helped me. He introduced me to everyone else, and I realized I wasn't alone. When did this all happen? He never said a thing. Well, I mean, of course you didn't. Texting me with, Hey, I'm a witch! was probably the last thing on your mind, but... I wish I'd been there for her. I was freaking out as it was. I couldn't imagine dealing with all of it completely alone. No support. Even if I couldn't have known what she was dealing with, I felt like a really crappy best friend. 
It was almost three years ago, and you need to worry about it now. Of course, now that you do know, you better be prepared for all the rants about magic and every witchy thing like brooms. People actually ride them. I cannot, for the life of me. Figure out how they manage it? Having a stick jammed between your legs is the most uncomfortable thing ever. I couldn't deny that it sounded uncomfortable when she put it that way, and rather suspicious to be honest. Haven't quite gotten the hang of it then. Yeah, no, definitely not. We had a good laugh over that, and I found myself so relieved that Allie was, well, still Allie. I knew her crazy secret, but I felt like nothing changed except the topic of conversation. That was comforting. She dropped me at my house, promising she'd text to check on me. After the drive home in a hot shower, I was able to put things into perspective. Millions of people dreamed of something magical happening to them, and here I was having it actually happen to me. Okay, I could have do I could do without the headless fellow club member thing. That was creepy. Why is he headless anyway? And the thought of being a fairy or something was just outright weird. Still uncomfortable, but it was still kind of cool in a way. I went to bed promising myself to have more, a more open mind the next day. And this is where we're gonna stop. Cause now this is all new content to me. And I don't know what's gonna happen. And I kinda wonder if Spencer is gonna have magic or did I just consume all the magic? Cause I'm just overly powered. I don't know. Anyway, this is where we're gonna end today's episode. Stay beautiful and I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs> Sugar